Hello. Okay. All good. All good. Yeah. Should be should be working now. So, Alex, first of all, thank you for thank you for doing this. And thank you as well. What I want to know uh, beforehand, um, that kind of topics you you would like to talk about. I have some things in mind. And uh, first of all, uh, I work in the video game industry. Actually, I work in Ubisoft, and then I have this sidekick with some friends where we use like media to to do like a scalable business for digital products. So one of the topics that I'm most interested, uh, actually there are two, one is your, one is your career, like, mm -hmm. and the two of them, I don't know if you want to openly discuss with me, if not, this is okay. It's about the, the numbers, uh, you could get from from your sales in in art station and how we can scale them up and i don't know if you will be interested in hearing some strategies if you don't want to share the numbers that's okay um, i'm i'm okay yeah i'm okay with discussing that uh but i i'm i'm going to refrain from discussing the exact numbers like in terms of profits and stuff sure yeah, that's uh, totally just, fine. I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with like whatever, just just not the actual numbers. Awesome. Then that that should be that should be good to. That's mostly about it. Okay, um, Alex. So you you do have uh, an insane amount of artwork in your art station. I think one, two, three, four, five. So many pieces. How many pieces you have there? It's a lot. Yeah, I have quite a bit, like, it's, you, you can, I mean, you can sift through it, but, like, a lot of them are just sketches and stuff, like, just to keep me busy and keep, get the social media stuff going, but, um, yeah, <laughs> have, have a look at it. It's very impressive, actually. Um, it's one of the things that stand out the most for me is the amount of work you have put. I mean, of course, there are sketches, but they're very consistent. I mean, you can clearly see they're very similar to each other. Yeah, like um, for me, uh, because I'm a freelancer, um, I make my own hours. So, like a lot of times, like people think that it's not, it's it's like oh, I get to mess around for most of the day or something. But in actuality, it's actually more work than working in a studio because, uh, for me, like. I have to maintain my social media and I have to maintain my skill level. So I'm going to constantly draw and I'm going to have personal projects. And um, I don't know if it's impressive or not, because I know people who draw much more than me. But like for me, it's like I try to stay consistent and I want to have a style that is consistent so that when people contact me for work, they know what they're getting into. Yeah, that's very interesting. I mean... Clearly, from the point of view of someone who will hire you, I will expect you to deliver kind of the same style you have here. Does it happen very often? Like, or they ask you, like, can you do a sci-fi shoot or something? Oh no, I, I I've had many uh, many um, requests from clients. So like, even though I might draw like whatever anime or whatever is popular. Um, a lot of times when clients contact me, they're like, oh, I like your sketch or painting of this character. Um, I'm working on a video game. Can you paint my, uh, my characters in my game in your style or something like that, right? So even though I might not be drawing exactly what people want, people kind of know um, that if they contact me, they know exactly what they want and what I am capable of doing, and that's really the the benefits of being a freelancer. And how, how often you get these this requests? Because you have a huge following. I mean, that's relative, but I think 10,000 in art station is quite significant. Is it? I haven't really yeah. checked the numbers. But, you know, but thank you. Like, um, 
Yeah, like, uh, for, for me, it's like, usually I get at least one pretty sizable gig, like a sizable contract every month. But sometimes, um, there are certain months of the year where everybody is starting new projects. So, um, I, I believe September is one of the months that people really begin a lot of projects. So September's can get pretty busy for me or any, and sometimes just randomly. We don't know what, I don't really know when people are going to start projects that I will fit into, but it, it's, it, it can happen. Actually, that's pretty that's not a, that's not a really bad number i mean one gig a month i mean this is passively you don't actually search for it right the people come to you yeah like uh be, in the past i used to contact a lot of people and i still do like if there's companies i like to work in um like one of the bigger ones then i'll be like hey here i'll just email the supervisors or the art directors rather um hey here's my Here's my portfolio. Can you check it out if you like my work? Uh, if you have any work free, then sure, right? But it's a lot less than I used to do because, yes, uh, having a social media following is a big benefit. Uh, it's just because it's easier to get noticed. And, you know, when people notice you, then there's going to be some people that might want to have my services, right? So, for sure. Wh which, which kind of medium are the one you get contact most? Oh, uh, what do you mean by medium? Like, I mean, uh, you get like ArtStation or any other social media platform, they reach out to you to contact you. Um, I've had it from many, like Instagram, from Twitter, just a ton of gigs everywhere. But I would say ArtStation is definitely the most professional and the most gigs I've gotten was from ArtStation. That's pretty cool. How, how often do you upload art, artwork to ArtStation? Um... I I try my best to upload at least once a week, but uh, recently I've been busy with work. Like, uh, well, I mean, like th this video, like I don't know when it's gonna be uploaded, but like as of June twenty twenty one, I've been quite busy with my own projects as well as other clients' projects. So I haven't been able to do that. But in general, I do want to keep a once per week type of schedule. Actually, that's that's pretty good. I mean, I'm browsing now to your artwork and it's like I want to check the date and the pieces just say oh, uploaded one month ago, uploaded one month ago, uploaded one month ago. Uh, that's very good actually. And the fact that you don't <laughs> you don't know how much followers you have is even more even better. I mean um, this is where you uh, at least I think you can have some momentum now going where you just put it out there very frequently oh yeah definitely um momentum is the key word like the very good term that you use because a lot of times you have to understand like uh, I, I, actually I'll, I'll start from the beginning here um okay one of my mentors bobby chu from uh from imaginism studios i'm not sure if you've heard of him or whatever but i do um he oh yes yes bobby yeah bobby chu has, has his name everywhere so <laughs> yeah um he he taught me one thing that was really important, and that's you need to have a fast style and you need to have a slow style. And what hmm. he meant by that is that sometimes you need to bring a, a fast style to your to whatever uh, gig that you need, and you, sometimes you need to have a slow style. And why that's important is, especially when it comes to social media, nobody is expecting you to have really elaborate paintings every day um there's just no way you're able to have a slow style for that purpose but if you have something that is fast and easy to do then you can really create a ton of work and when it comes to social media you know it's uploading is very important and you have to be very consistent and so like having a fast style will help you in that regard because again there is no way you are able to keep a schedule if you have a very slow style only. So that's something that Bobby Chu really taught me and something I really take into heart when it comes to my work. Yeah, that's actually a really, really good advice. Uh, like you say, it's very hard to, to keep up the consistency if your style is really hard. And I think a lot of artists struggle with, you know, this piece that needs to be super polished or whatever, and they just post one artwork one 
after one year or something, uh, several months. And uh, you see the portfolio is good, but they only have like five, six pieces uh, only to browse. And I think from a social media standpoint, of course, quantity is, is very important. And yeah, that, that's actually that's actually a very, very good tip. Yeah, like um, it like for like don't make any mistake about it. For my professional portfolio, as you said, I would only have five or six, right? Mm -hmm. Really good pieces. Um, but you know, just for screwing around and just posting on social media, I'm not going to really worry about it because those are separate, and clients tend to know those are separate, right? And sometimes they do want a very fast style piece of work, and that's okay. But if they want a more elaborate, more polished type of look, then they can always refer back to my professional portfolio and tell me they want that instead. So um, clients are generally like pretty lenient. Like I, I know there's some, there's people who say, oh, you should always just post your best work. You have to spend like 50 hours each piece. Yeah. Like, like, you know, you only put your best work, but I don't really believe in that because it's like you're just, you're going to have fans as you make more work and you don't want to leave them hanging without anything to see, right? And you just need, you really want to have something that you can upload every so often and consistently. That's that's very good. Alex, how, how did you start? I mean, I see that your style is very unique, actually. It's very anime, but very painterly. I don't know how to say it. And how how did you start? Like how many how many years ago? How did you develop this uh, consistency in your artwork? So even if I see the old uh, sketches, they are very very similar to the to the latest ones. How 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 did you start? Um, wow, that's a pretty loaded question. Um, it's gonna, like, one of the main things is that I'm always the type of per artist that no matter if you asked me, like, 15 years ago or ask me now, I'm not the type of artist to color in between the lines. And one of the things when it comes to creating style is experimentation and practice. So, it took many years of just trying different things. Like, even when I look into even your portfolio here, right? I've done 3D. I've done really polished 2D stuff as well. I've done a lot of stuff. Like, I'm, I've experimented with a lot of things. And I went to uh, art college, a Sheridan College of Animation. So I was drawing cartoons as well, like Bugs Bunny and all that. So for me, like... The way I saw myself is that I, I know I learn by experimenting with different things. And some people might be more of the specialized people. They, they know what they like and they only go for that. But for me, like, even if you go back to my, if you go to my deviant art, which is much older than my art station, you can look back into a lot of stuff that I did in the past where I've been trying different things. And every time you make a painting, there's something that will stand out that you can always take to your next painting. And that's really how I saw it. The more you do stuff, the more you do, do create paintings and stuff, the more you eventually figure it out and see what you like personally. And you just bring it all together. And, you know, after many years of practicing and experimenting, you'll get to that point. How many years is that? I mean, how, when did you start? Is it when you was a kid? Was in high school? Oh, I said 15 years, but it's actually not 15 years. Um, I actually started later than most people because uh, for me, like, I mean, um, you, like, I don't, I don't want to assume, are, are you, you're Chinese, right? I'm not Chinese. I live in China. Oh, okay, right. oh, you live in China. Okay. No, I'm, I'm really sorry. Yeah. Cause, cause you, yeah, you, yeah. Because you said you worked in Ubisoft and you live in yeah, China. So, yeah. Um, on your portfolio. Sorry about that. I don't want to, I don't want to assume, but, um, I'm not worried. Uh, <laughs> going back to uh, when I when I started, I actually started very late in high school, and I was gonna make a really nice transition. Like it, like when it comes to because I'm Chinese, like my parents always wanted to me to go into like math and sciences and stuff. 
So I never really had the upbringing of an artist, right? But when I was in high school, I believe when I was 17 or 16 back then, um, that's when I was like, okay, I'm growing up. I really don't like math and science, like even though my parents pushed me towards it. And I'm sure a lot of the uh, Asians watching this would <laughs> resonate with like, with this sort of mentality as well. It, it have it is a stereotype of our culture, but um, yeah, like I was just a math and science nerd, but I really didn't like it. So I started to, um, I started to really. Uh, think about okay what do I really like and I tried different things and eventually art was the one thing that I could really get into and you know much much to the dismay of my parents I went into art and that's really all in the past now so <laughs> did you ever think you will be able to make a living out of it was this your goal at the beginning or it was just an escape from not wanting to do math or science for me, I already had researched into how to make money as an artist, even back then, because, you know, when, you will, when, when I'm trying to convince my parents about this stuff, like, I, I, like, they didn't understand that I'm passionate in art, but they will understand that perhaps there are ways to make money in art. So, um, one, one main site that I used to go to was conceptart.org, which was a massive site for people who are professionals as well as people who want to be professional. And I researched a lot of the industry stuff beforehand and really brought together, hey, maybe if I work really hard, I can do what they do as well. Now, I'm not really, uh, I have, I am a concept artist, but I'm not really only a concept artist anymore. So I kind of deviate away from that. But in general, it, like, it is a stereotype, um, especially among parents that you can't make money in art. And I didn't like that mentality, so I wanted to disprove it. And yeah, one of my goals was to make money, but ultimately it was also something that I really like to do. So it kind of worked well together. That's very nice. You have a lot of fan arts, uh, especially with anime stuff. Which which one you like more to create, like concept art, original concept art, or doing fan arts? Um. Well, I, I'm more of an illustrator, so uh, fine, fine arts, uh, that's a different territory. I, I like to distinguish that with illustration. Mm -hmm. But yeah, definitely illustration is something that I've kind of leaned into more. Um, I have done concept art uh, uh, depending on the uh, what my clients want, right? Like character designing and all that. But in general, I my recent gigs have been more for clients who want to have a book cover or a comic cover or that sort of thing, just the illustrative side of art. So yeah, I would say that is more of my thing than um, concept art and other industries. That's very cool. I mean, the fact that you can do illustration instead of concept for your works. I mean, <laughs> clearly you have a lot of artistic pieces that for a Concept artists normally they are just like super specific details, different angles, whatever. And it's really nice that you kind of get the gigs that are very similar to your portfolio. Actually, that's very good. Um. Yeah. Like uh, as you like. Thank you very much. And one of the things is that you have to understand as a freelancer, it's somewhat different than getting jobs as a studio artist because as a freelancer you have to distinguish yourself with your style. So if you don't have something that stands out immediately, then why would they hire you, right? Like they, they could just hire somebody who's applying to your studio and have a person that will draw the same stuff as the studio style, so to speak. So for me, I wanted to have a style where like people, when when clients come to me, they know, is a, they know that, what they're getting into and they know that I, I'm not saying I'm this unique butterfly or whatever, but uh, I'm one of the very few people who could pull off the style and, and I'm good at it. So that actually helps in terms of uh, getting freelance gigs. Awesome. Uh, you talk about the making money in art mentality. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I hear your parents, even though they didn't think they you could make a living out of this, they still think like, okay, you can still can make money uh, in art. Oh, uh, sorry, sorry, repeat that. 
Uh, let me rephrase it there. Um, if there is this misconception, especially uh, with older people, uh, understandable because art uh, never had the same chances as it has today with the internet and the social media. When you want to become an artist in the past, oh man, good luck. <laughs> good luck showing, yeah, yeah, of showing <laughs> your work or making a living. It's a, it's a great time. Uh, I believe it's a extremely good time to be an artist now, not only in painting, but in any other, any other kind of art. Um, I, I remember I bought your tutorial like almost, I think almost a year ago when I wanted to start learning to paint. I think I bought the one with the uh, Fire Emblem. Oh, yes, yes. So yeah. That was one of the first ones, right? Was yeah, I think that one one of the first ones. Uh, now I see. Now I see you have more. Um, I know. I know some friends that are extremely good at what they do, and they have a they have a nice job in, in the industry, but they are very afraid to to sell something. Uh, even though when I talk with them, um, it's like, hey, how about? Dude, you're extremely good. It's like their work is bananas. Like, why don't you sell something? I mean, why? Why you can have an extra income, and no matter how hard I try to convince them, I, I never, I never get it right. Uh, even when I tell them, what if you get sick? What if, what if you lose your your job? What if the company goes bankrupt? Whatever. You, what if you just don't want to work and you still want to have some income? Um, they are really against that. Uh, one of one of the reasons is the perfectionist mindset. Uh, there are other people better than me, and I'm not worthy of selling anything. Uh, I think that was one of the biggest one. And then other things they tell to themselves, like, no, it's a big market. I need social media, blah, 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 blah. Um, I'm mostly interested about how, how did you decide to begin selling your your tutorials and um, what, what was it like that day you decide okay let's let's start doing this yeah so actually uh one of the reasons why i started was because of uh, covid19 so i usually have extra income from going to comic conventions and selling artwork there uh, i'm i'm sure there's the comic conventions in everywhere like in china and japan especially as well um so those are actually very good outlets to make money, by the way. Um, however, as you would imagine, because of the pandemic, um, I knew for sure right off the bat that, oh no, we're not gonna, we're gonna lose that income source now. So I had an idea before, uh, before COVID where I would just make online tutorials on ArtStation and Gumroad. Um, and I was like, I was gonna plan to do it like maybe this year, like, um, or, or like later in 2020, but because of the pandemic, I was I, I knew I had to start immediately, even if I felt like uh, I wasn't ready. Um, which I you know for and I completely understand. Um, like you, you mentioned, your friends they they're really good, but they don't want to do it because they're they might be a little bit um, insecure about their ability and stuff. But for me, I was really insecure as well, and I still am. Like I'm still going to have days where I'm like. Oh man, what am I doing? Why? Am, how am I a professional? Right? Like, there's some days it just doesn't work out. So, but either way, like because of the pandemic, I had to jump in no matter what. I didn't. Ha I didn't care if I wasn't ready or something. I had to figure something out, and that's really how I started. And uh, eventually, people um, people resonated with the tutorials. So I was like, hey, maybe I could just keep continuing to do this. And yeah, and now we're here. So I have like 20 something tutorials later, you know, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of tutorials, actually. Uh, how was the first reception? It was better than you expected. It, it was, uh, I, I don't know. Usually the first one doesn't go that well, but it's like your expectations are zero. So as long as one people buy, it's like, okay, can keep doing this. Yeah, like it actually was way better than I thought. The uh, first few tutorials I made actually sell quite a bit and still sell quite a bit. Um, to my surprise, because I wasn't like I for for me I was like just I was just thinking oh I'm just gonna mess around like 
given that I'm not going to have uh, comic conventions to rely on, uh, I, c- I need to just maybe just sell whatever I can and make as much money as I can, no matter what. But it turns out that people actually do like my tutorials, and, you know, I, I was really shocked and I, I'm appreciative of everybody who supported me, and, uh, t- and to this day as well. And it's just one of those things where sometimes you need to just jump into the pool at the deep end and hope that you can swim, and in this case, it worked out. Yeah, it's just... It's just doing it without thinking. If you think too much, you you just get paralyzed. Yep. Have you seen an increase in your in your tutorials as time goes, where you increase your number of followers, uh, both in our station or any other social media? Have you seen a relationship between that? Um, there's always going to be correlations. Um, I don't know if it's just because of the number of fans, but. Um, just having more tutorials out, like I, I have tutorials for uh, basically different topics. Uh, one of my gimmicks is that is the coffee grind tutorial, meaning for the price of a coffee, you can learn like one concept of art and uh, it's affordable. And that's really what I try to push. So whenever I create more of these tutorials, there might be somebody who was like, oh, I would I didn't buy that one. But because you're talking about this stuff then I'm going to purchase that instead, right? So, like, I, there's a billion things you can talk about in art, so I'm not going to hit everything immediately, but as I create more tutorials, more people are purchasing because I have more of a selection, if that makes sense. It does, it does. Uh, I'm not sure aware if you're aware of this concept called scalable business. Um, I, I know a little bit of it, but you can reiterate and explain what it is. Sure. So. For for example, you, you told me you used to go to the conventions and sell the sell the print, and and that will be considered non scalable business. And the reason is the print number a hundred you do is more effort than selling one print. Uh, like a restaurant, for example, is also not a scalable business. If you want to sell one dish. Uh, that costs you some effort. If you want to sell a hundred dishes, you still need to put more effort. The m- increased number of, uh, let's just say, things you want to sell, you increase the effort. However, uh, a scalable business is you sell one thing, the first one, and it takes you one effort. And let's just say the number a hundred after two years, you still do the, put the same effort, but the result is exponentially high. Um, Examples of that are, for example, Joe Rogan. He still does the the podcast is the same amount of effort, same amount of hours. Yet he gets insane amount of money after he finished one podcast. I mean, just millions. It can get crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think you're doing a good thing here, where you are actually escalating it in a non-linear way. I'm, I'm sure, like compare the. The first tutorial you put and the last one, the they should go better in the in the long run, especially because you have quantity. Yeah, like um, so I, I will make a. I think my I, I completely agree with you. Um, it is uh, it is an example of a skill of business by making these tutorials. Um, but in terms of conventions, it is actually pretty scalable as well because um. The artwork that I create, that's the effort, right? So like one mm-hmm. painting is my, the painting of the fan art character or whatever is, um, one painting of effort, but I can print a lot of them, um, through, well, I have, I have somebody else printing for me. So like if I sell one print or a hundred print, prints is still considered like does that make sense like i don't know like i, I feel like that is considered scalable in its own way as well so yeah am the, I, or am i getting the wrong de- definition I, I think that will be called leverage i mean just doing one painting and then just print it but let's just mm-hmm. say that the cost of printing 100 is is has a higher cost of printing one or versus 1000 versus 10000 uh, in terms of, oh, in terms okay, of okay. Cost. Oh, yeah, then then yes, uh, then it's definitely not scalable. But if that's considered, yeah. But it's very interesting. You told me you started this business during the pandemic. I think a lot of people realize that they just need to find another way. 
after the pandemic is over. Uh, let's hope so. It's over one day. Uh, uh, hopefully. Uh, will you just continue? Will, will you continue to do this? Um, that's something I've considered. Um, I, I definitely on the side of continuing because uh, because it's something that people resonate with, right? There's a demand for for me to create these tutorials, which I didn't realize. Um, but in terms of how many I dish out every so often, uh, I probably will slow it down because I would have to juggle uh, with like conventions and other obligations after the pandemic is over. So um, it, hopefully that makes sense. It does. It does make a lot of sense, actually. Um, before before wrapping up, um, I think you have uh, you, you have very good things here. One is consistency, and that's very good for people who are selling online or artists or whatever thing they are selling, they are painting or doing three D or whatever. I, consistency is the number one thing. Uh, you need to have in your in your portfolio or in your business. If you see yourself as a business, then people trust other people who are consistent with what they do. Imagine you are like the best in the world, but only have one piece. Uh, you cannot expect the next one to be delivered the same as the other one because there is no proof. I'm not sure if you were aware of this. Uh, how important was it when you? start posting so many, so many artworks. Were you aware that it was that important? Um, to some degree, yeah, because uh, the, the way I see it is I'm, um, I, I'm sure you play video games, right? Like, well, I'm yeah. going to assume that. Like, uh, for me, I was really into World of Warcraft. Uh, I, are you, were you, did you ever play that game? Or? I play a lot of MMOs, not World of Warcraft, MMO. but I, I, MMO, I'm aware yeah, yeah. of how it works. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So the way I see it is that like MMOs are notorious for grinding experience and all that, right? And you can't just be an artist and not do anything. I don't care. I, I guess, as you said, you could be the best artist in the world, but if you're, you, you're just talented, but if you're not putting in the work, then you're just wasting your talents and nobody will ever see you use your talents. So you nowadays, especially in the internet age, you have to be your own brand. So like if people come to me, they know they're getting an Alex Chow because of all the pieces I have and my portfolio, people know what they're getting into and they know what my brand is. And you and everybody who's listening to this as well, you need to have your own brand as well. It's very important. The last thing you want to do nowadays in the, today's world is that you don't have a brand. You don't have a name value because you're always going to be disposable in the industry. And I'm sorry if that offends some people who listen to this, but that's really the truth. If you have no name, no popularity of any kind, and you do the same stuff as 20 million other people, you're not going to stand out any more than other, other people, and you will never reach a point where you can you are marketable so this is why you have to treat yourself with the respect that you are a brand and you have to make yourself a brand and if that means making a like a ton of paintings then sure or if you have other approaches to making your brand bigger then sure but either way you need to have something i totally agree i mean brand is it's the most important thing now and I also agree with you. If you don't have a brand, you have nothing now. And I, I think that the reason is behind it. it it's about uh, wealth creation has changed in the last years uh, very rapidly. In the past, the only leverage you had was hiring people and having money. So if you want to create something, you hire more people. Right, that's how you used to do it. Then the industrial age comes in, and less people are needed. And then the technology age comes, and actually no people are needed. So the leverage comes from your social media, and it's actually the number one thing you need to have now to survive in this age 
I, I always tell people like if you need a job now, you are outdated. You can easily work for yourself in the long run if you really put if you really put the effort. And like you say, the branding is very important too. Um, one of the things about the branding is the name. A lot of people are confused about if they're using a nickname, a real name, uh, whatever. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I, I have tried using uh, aliases before, um, but for me, like I felt Alex Chow just sounded really. Like it, it was short enough and all that, so that's so I don't like for for me I could rely back onto my own name, but there's definitely a lot of um, other artists who would prefer uh, just making like a cooler name. Maybe their 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 real name's a little bit too hard to pronounce or that sort of thing. Then in that case, then yeah, you you could uh, just brand yourself as a different name, and there's really no nothing wrong with either. Um, either side of things, right? It's mostly going to be your work that will stand out. Actually, yeah, I agree. What, whatever nickname you put for your brand needs to be memorable. I mean, I think Alex Cho is very easy to remember, like you say. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Can, can it's be. one of those things where I was like, do I want to try to have fancier names, which I've done before? But for me, it's like ultimately, it was like. Uh, it's just, it's just, I, uh, it's just too much effort. It's like, okay, I'm just gonna go with my real name. It's like, whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's that's really good, actually, because a lot of people, I see, they can get much more followers if their their name will be easier to remember. <laughs> uh, I remember uh, many years ago. So of course, uh, uh, in the internet, I just put myself Momo. Or Ma, this which is so easy. This is like the name they put me in China. It's like, oh, this is perfect. But my real name is Mauricio, which is like if yeah. you're thinking like again, uh, what was the name? It's like that happened to me a lot. It's like I say my name. It's like sorry, what 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 was your name? Can you say it again? Especially like in business meeting or something where you use or round tables or when you go to a convention, you gave your card. It's like, sorry, what was your name? Um, I, I guess, I, I don't know. Like, I guess being in China is different. Like, Mauricio is a, like, I do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, so, like, there are a lot of Mauricio. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah there um, are. Let's just say it can get better. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, I, I, I guess in China, because English is, you know, is not their main language, they're like, oh, Mauricio is a little bit complicated for them. But, you know, like if you, let's say you were to work in North America or, or something, I don't think people would mind either way. It, it is, it is easier. Uh, I remember I took one class. Uh, I don't know if you, I don't know if you hear of Dan Lok. I think he's in Canada too. She's a mm -hmm. Chinese Canadian uh, guy. Back in the day, he used to have these classes. Now he doesn't. I was fortunate enough to be one of the first ones. And one of the questions uh, that I asked him was like, so what if your name is too complicated for people to remember? And without hesitation, like he didn't think about it, he he told me, you fucking change it. Because if they, ca <laughs> <laughs> they, if they cannot remember your name, they cannot buy from you. Sorry to clarify, it's Dan Lock, right? Dan Lock. Yeah, okay, yes, I, I know that. Yeah, that, that guy is vocal. But yeah, he, yeah, like, that's a really good tip, right? Like, Dan, Dan Locke is a very easy to remember name. It's short. Um, you can spell it, like, as it sounds, right? So, like, yeah. that's something to think about. Um, but yeah, like, in, in a lot of cases, it comes down to context as well. Like, so for, for me, it's like Alex Chow might be memorable, but at the same time, there might be a lot of Alex Chows out there. So that was why one of the considerations was uh, whether there's too many people named Alex Chow. And for, for me, like, I ultimately just realized it, there aren't big name artists named Alex Chow, so I might as well uh, try it for myself. Um, you just have to find something that is unique, that's easy to spell, easy to say, um, for whichever country you're working in, and um, if it sticks, then just go with it. Yeah, actually, yeah, for sure, there are a lot of Alex Chow there. Uh, 
I think one of the things that artists need to learn is about how the how the internet works. And even if your name is common, if you do the right things, it will it will pop up. I can throw some knowledge bombs here. I, I hope I don't scare you. But how usually you name your files, your artworks when you upload them to ArtStation? The name of the file. Um oh sorry, sorry. How how do I name my files? Yeah. <laughs> Um, it, it depends on uh, what the purpose is. So, like, if it's just a sketch that I'm going to throw down in social media, then who cares what the file is, whatever na- whatever the character is, or whatever whatever I want to name it, I'm just going to name it that way. But if I'm working for somebody, like a studio or whatever, then they generally have etiquette on what the file name should be. Um, and they're very specific to it because they have to organize potentially thousands of images uh, for their video game or animation or whatever. So uh, in that case, then I'll have to follow their guidelines regarding that. Yeah, I totally get what you mean. Uh, the, the reason I ask that, and I think a lot of people don't know that, uh, I think uh, I learned this like last year or something. Um, it pay off when I start applying it. Actually, the name of the files you have, uh, as you know, uh, Google, the search engine, they will, when they want to find you, they, when they put Alex Cho and then you show up in the results, Google needs to find some kind of clues. And sadly, the picture doesn't have any information. Uh, so far, Google cannot really translate like uh, let's just say machine learning to ident- identify pictures and who was it or whoever. So if you name your files, like, I don't know, let's just say the last piece you had, the Berserker, if you put like the file name is Berserker, Berserker, Fan Art, Alex Cho, that will show. I mean, no one sees it, of course, but that will show in the internet. And as you put more files there and you change the name of them, you will dominate the market if you rename your files in a way that Google can find them and can read them. Actually, everything everything matters in the internet. And I think that's a killer tip that not many people uh, are using it. And not many, not many people are aware. <laughs> I hope you don't need to update all of these words because it's too I mean, much. You know, that, that, that's an actually great tip. I actually didn't know that. Like for me, like for me, I, I'm just a lazy bum. Like if, if I don't have to change the name of something, make it fancy, then I'm not going to do it. But what you said just makes sense. And I, going forward, I, I think I might try to do that and see if there's any differences when it comes to that. <laughs> that's a lot of work, actually. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you have a lot of works. If you have like five or six, it's like, I think it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it is, it is, and it comes also in the videos. I know you have a YouTube channel and you put your videos there. And you have like your speed paintings. That mm-hmm. also comes uh, the name of the file, uh, the tags, the description. All of it is related to how people find you. And these are, I think, are easy things to learn but are things that are we don't really consider it when you are doing something. And I think if if you apply these tips, if you rename the videos, if you rename the files, you will exponentially increase. Especially if you rename the files in a way that people can find you easier. For example, um, instead of putting, um, let's just say, I, I'm just watching your art station now, like um, you have, Fiora original, right? That's uh, one of the name of the artwork. Let's just say you rename your file. The title is the same. Let's just say Fiora original. Let's just say you rename the file uh, "Best Tutorials for Beginners for Painters." Alex Cho. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you can see where I, where I'm where I'm going. So. Yeah, it's the idea of clickbaiting, right? It is. It is clickbaiting. Right? In a way, they are you are helping people to find you. And depending on your audience, it's like what kind of uh, tutorials they are they like they want to find. Uh, if they put that in Google, like tutorial for painters, beginners, anime style, whatever, 
if you put that in your file, it, it, they will find you. It, they will find you. And the reason you want that uh, is because you have in your art station this huge following, actually. Um, but you are dependent on the algo algorithm of the art station website to show off uh, frequently or not frequently. Basically, you lose control of how often your artwork will show to the people. When you apply these things, you will see that people will find you outside of art station just by Googling you. And I think that yeah, will be a game changer. Yeah, I'll keep that in mind. It actually makes a lot of sense. It is extra work to think of those clickbaity stuff, but... You it know, I, yeah, it does seem like it'll pay off for sure. So thank you for that. <laughs> it does. No, you're, you're welcome. I think a lot of people are <laughs> don't know about that. They are missing a lot of opportunities there. But yeah, I, I think I think you're doing great. I think you have a you have a huge following. You have consistency. You have a very unique style, and like you say, you do it fast. Um, Speed, speed is very important. Um, there are a lot of things we can we can discuss <laughs> of the interview, but I think we can wrap it up uh, now. Just Alex, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, like, where where can people find you? Um, the best way is of course my main portfolio website, which is artofchow dot com. Um, if you go on the front page, all my social media links are there. All right. I will make sure you, I put the social links in the description. And also, like if you want to buy some tutorials, some paint tutorials, check them out. Uh, I bought them personally. I think they're really good, actually. And they are, and they are fast. I mean, there's, it's not like 40-hour tutorial or something. And I think that's good uh, because not many people have much time. And you just get right to the point. And I actually, you do give a lot of tips during the tutorial that I find very, very useful. At least the one I bought. Yeah, like uh, my art station uh, definitely, and, and my Gumroad as well has all my tutorials, and I'll be consistently uploading on there as well. All right. Thank you so much, Alex. Thank you.